make Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear If you're over income, and many people are, there is a respite category as well where you can pay, again, according to your income, a percentage of what I am charged. I don't provide any of my own services. They are all contracted out. I oversee them, but they are contracted out to agencies that have contracts with elder services, and the state approves those contracts as well as the contract rates. And I just wanted to throw in one other point right at this point, because I know one of the big issues for a lot of folks as they're slowing down is the provision of home care. Mm -hmm. And I've often, we often discuss, well, you know, I've got to have my good friend's cousin is going to do this, and it's going to be terrific, and I'm not even going to declare it, and everything is going to work out great. So I, I just want to, you know, broadly mention one of the nice things about talking to, the, to, to Sherry is that they all of first of all everybody that she's contracting with is an agency that is in turn vetting and, and reviewing their own employees. Mm -hmm. She in turn and her agency in turn vets the agencies to make sure that they're meeting certain criteria in terms of making sure that if somebody is in your house and next thing you know the jewelry is missing, they're bonded so that you know so that somebody's actually going to pay you back, you know, and to, and to make sure that they're to do the Corey checks to make sure mm -hmm. that the folks that you've got there aren't going to give you trouble. So, so it, you may decide at the end of the day that you want to use a separate person on your own, and that's fine. But once again, there is no cost to talking with Sherry and figuring this out and figuring out whether it isn't better to be, to be using an agency, and if so, what agencies you want to use. Mm -hmm. no, thank you. And, and by using an agency, you also receive, in my case, my oversight. I'm going to come into the home on a regular basis. I'm available by phone. I'm going to do you know, follow-up home visits. If there are issues with any of the staff that's in your home, I'm going to then work with the agency that I've assigned to that case um, so that there's a lot more oversight. I think if you go to, uh, mine happens to be yellow. I'm not sure what color my assistant did for you, but it reads Elder Services Home Care Program Criteria. That actually gives you the income limits so that you, you're able to see what those numbers are that I'm going to be looking at when I come into your home. Um, it gives you the activities, the ADLs and the IADLs um, that I have to look at and evaluate. Um, there are some higher level programs. I, I, by going in, I then look at and develop what I think is the best care plan for this particular person who meets the criteria. So I'm going to determine that you need a shower once a week and someone to do some light housekeeping and grocery shopping another day of the week. We'll determine the days of the week and the hours that are going to be most appropriate for your needs. I then set that care plan and order it from whatever agency I'm working with. I will then follow back up with you to make sure that those plans are being carried out correctly. In addition to that, we would most likely put a lifeline into your home which would become part of your care plan cost. Um, currently, if you have a lifeline privately, you know that's about $40 a month. If you're only paying me $40 a month, you're obviously saving money because you're going to be getting two hours a week of a homemaker and a lifeline and you might be getting Meals on Wheels as well. Um, I would pay for someone to go to a... I said if you were determined to have a copay of $40 a month, Lifeline currently is $40 a month independently. So for $40 a month through Elder Services, if you meet that criteria, you would be getting a Lifeline. Perhaps you'd be getting Meals on Wheels every day, and you'd be getting someone to come in and help you bathe, shop, or clean. So you already are saving money, if you can look at it from that standpoint. Um, social day programs, I do pay for people to go to the social day program here in Nantucket. If it's a need that we can determine, either for a family member or for the senior themselves. That is something we would pay for. And then there is the companion program, and I'm not as versed on that. We haven't done a lot with that here as yet. So, um, but those are all of the different programs and or services that I might set up for you. <laughs> so we're gonna have Sherry talk about ECOP. Just quickly. Yes. Um, ECOP means I can double 
the amount of service and work or provided in your home if you meet a certain frail criteria. Again, I'm gonna have a nurse come in, screen you. The nurse is gonna say, yes, this person really could benefit from an increased plan. So instead of coming in once a week and doing some shopping and another day for a bath, we might come seven days a week. Um, and again, your copay doesn't change. If you're paying $40 a month, it's still $40 a month, whether it's two hours a week or seven hours a week. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about um, home care. We were talking about it and we were talking about the fact that, that, that Sherry actually um, can provide home care and supervises that home care. There are several providers here on Martha's Vineyard. I, I, oh, oh, oh dear. I was just testing to see if you were paying attention. Who's paying attention? <laughs> how, many, how many thought that it was really the entire thing? That means you're entitled to the more advanced program in elder and home service. Uh, here in Nantucket, there are several major providers, right? There's Anodyne. And I was introduced to Linda. No, no, Donna. 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 Last name. Spidell. Can you Spidel. just stand up? Yeah. And that's Donna Spidell, and that's Anodyne, and that's one of the programs that is that is actually that is act, that Sherry actually um, contracts with. Um, there's Alice Daniels, who has been here for years. Can you just stand up? Hi, Alice. Um, who also provides home care, and we're going to be talking about home care. And actually, uh, both of these folks are going to be back probably at our next presentation. Right, because we're going to be talking about that one more in detail. But I wanted to uh, ask um, um, uh, Ella Finn from the Visiting Nurses Association of Nantucket <laughs> uh, to talk to you a little bit about visiting nurses and what they're doing here. Because once again, they're a crucial kind of component of what happens here. And they're also one of the groups that provides home care services here. So I want just them to just talk to you about home care. Ella. Away we go. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ella Finn, and I'm the clinical supervisor for the Visiting Nurse Association on Nantucket. Um, I think many of you know that we are run by the Martha's Vineyard Nursing Association, but we are largely an autonomous group here. All of our clinicians are here. They do just the administrative stuff, the stuff we don't want to do, maybe. Um, the Visiting Nurse Association provides care in the home for people, patients, who need um, short-term, acute, long-term, or chronic illness management. Um, we have nurses on staff, we have physical therapists, we have occupational therapists, we have a speech, oh, we don't have speech. We, I just added a dietitian to our staff, and we have a medical social worker. And we have many home health aides or certified nurse assistants who provide personal care in the home for our patients. Um, we work very closely as a team. Um, we can because we're small here. We mostly know everybody anyway. Um, even in summertime, we're able to make connections with people and families. And so basically, the way you would access our services is um, largely your doctor or primary care physician would make a referral to our agency to provide you some care in the home. Um, perhaps you've had a knee replacement, a hip replacement, um, maybe you're recovering from some other surgery, or you have an infection or pain or something that needs to be managed closely, um, and we can come into the home and do that. There's one little piece that's important, or maybe a big piece. The criteria for, for care through the VNA is that you have to be homebound. And homebound isn't as restrictive as it sounds. Homebound means that it's difficult for you to get out. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't go to church. It doesn't mean that you can't go to a special event. Um, it just means that it's difficult for you to access health care, like going to your doctor's office. Can you drive? <sighs> Not so much. Because if you can, well, because, because basically the insurance company, whether it's Medicare, Blue Cross, or whomever, they believe that if you can drive, then you can get yourself to the doctor's office, you know, or you can go to an outpatient treatment. So it's for people who are incapacitated, not necessarily forever, just for this period of, of uh, health compromise. But what you shouldn't do is, but we had this conversation with a visiting nurse from um, in, in out where we live in central Massachusetts. You shouldn't be at the Dunkin' Donuts when the visiting nurse shows up. Right? <laughs> and you're in front of her in line, and she goes up and says, but Mr. Ch Mr. Jones, I thought that, right, you shouldn't be really. there. So and, now, and now when they ask right. you, do you want your usual? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> not so much, not so much. So, you know, the, the physicians on Nantucket 
are very um, well aware of who their patients are, what their lives are about. They understand that, you know, in order to, to avail of the service and maximize your, your well-being, you can be homebound for a little bit. As I said, it doesn't mean you're homebound forever. It doesn't mean you're stuck in a bed. It just means that, you know, you can't go back to your regular day as you do when you're in the whole of your health. So that's one little piece. And um, so the referral comes through the physician and the physician writes our orders. So Dr. Pearl is my doctor. So if I have an issue that requires home care, she will let the, the nurse know what she's to do. The physical therapist know what she's expecting from care. Um, we again offer home health aides to come in for as long as you need them and we do that. We try and taper down to get you back to whatever level of independence you enjoyed before we came through the door. Um, what else do we have? That's a lot. That's, uh, that, that is a lot. That's that a is lot. a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very sure much. Thing. Sure thing. I'm only going to talk about two lawyer things because if you're just slowing down, people will always say, well, you know, there's always that. What are the documents that I have to have? You know, and I always tell people when you're doing estate planning, the goal of the exercise is to sleep well. The goal of the exercise is to sleep well. Except okay. if you are slowing down and you don't have a power of attorney and a health care proxy, I am telling you, you should not be sleeping well. You do not need a will. That only takes effect if you die. You're not going to care at that point. But for these documents, if you, if you do not have a power of attorney and you have a stroke, or you have in a car accident, and you if and for any number of things, and someone needs to be signing a check on your behalf, they have to get appointed as your conservator. That's going to cost that person five or ten thousand dollars, and it's going to take a month or two to get done. Right? It's a big deal. Right? And two or three people, you know, if you, I don't know, maybe you have a per perfectly functional family, but if it's not so functional. Two or three nieces or nephews or sons or daughters can be fighting about this because that's when they fight, you know, is when you're incapacitated. So I'm just going to talk about powers of attorney for a second. 